Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with a Fallout 76 video. Now there's one question I get quite often on both my channel as well as social media, which is Maddie, where the hell are the Fallout 76 videos? Why don't you cover that game as much anymore, man? What's going on? As someone who's built their channel off of a lot of Bethesda games, and I covered them almost exclusively up until I'd say about the middle of last year, I'd have some questions too if I were the one watching my video, which is why I really want to sit down today, go in depth on that question and have a chat with you guys in this vlog style video. So now, let's get right into it. It starts off really with Fallout 76, which is a game that I was making it no secret I was displeased with. And I don't want to be that YouTuber who beats the dead horse on why Fallout 76 was a disappointment and re-explain myself a million times. It was a lackluster effort by Bethesda Game Studios, who is one of my favorite game developers. So suffice to say, I knew they could have done better and what they presented to me was an insult as a longtime fan. So I was not going to play the game. This channel is built off of games I was passionate about and always has been. Ever since the very first time I started making Fallout videos before that, it was Skyrim. These were games that I made videos about because I loved the series. I loved the game, so therefore I always wanted to make content about it. Sometimes that's not the most business savvy decision because in a situation like Fallout 76 where it's a dumpster fire and everyone can't help but watch, I get sick to my stomach constantly talking about this cycle of insanity with the Fallout 76 patch process, which is games get patched, let's talk about the fixes, which are just primary bug fixes to get the game into a stable fashion. Those bug fixes activate an old bug, which is now the new topic of conversation on how Bethesda botched this patch, Bethesda fixes that with another patch, and then we rejoice once again on how Fallout 76 might be on track. And it's that endless loop to me always with this game where I simply can't find myself a way to add to that conversation other than here's the new patch, read the patch notes, this is great, and then when it gets messed up, here's what happened, and that's it. Now I'm not a stranger to covering gaming controversies. I'm the first one to hop in when there's some microtransaction issues. I talked a lot about the Atomic Shop in Fallout 76 or EA's very concerning microtransactions within Anthem. It's not that I don't like jumping into that type of controversy. It's just with Fallout 76, the conversation's always been the same. And when it changed, like for example, the survival mode, I was the first to really hop in there and just be like, yo, this is awesome. This is a good step forward for the game and I want to play this. So for those who think I'm outright abandoning Fallout or outright abandoning Bethesda, number one, it's not like a loyalty thing. I, like I said, I've always covered these games because I love their games. And I think Fallout 76 can easily become something better, which is part of the reason there's frustration there. But right now, it's just not a game I like to play. Part of this is a mental thing too. I enjoy my job because I get to play games I like. And sometimes part of that as a reviewer is I get to play games that I don't like, and that's fine. But as long as I have the choice, and as long as Fallout 76 remains broken and in a lot of ways unplayable and constantly is fighting with bugs and frustrating players, and it's been multiple months after launch, as a gamer in general, that's, that's not enticing. I'll gladly add my two cents to the conversation, like during that whole canvas bag fiasco and everything, I was right in on that. But there comes a point where it's like, okay, let's try to move the channel forward in other ways. While Fallout and Bethesda start to get their shit together, I, I don't take my audience for granted, but I know a lot of you always want to hear my thoughts on Bethesda, and I appreciate that so much, which is why I still create that content, because there are times I still do enjoy it. But what excites me often is sitting down and talking about Anthem or CD Projekt Red, a developer who I love because they made The Witcher 2, which is my first game from them, and then they made The Witcher 3, which is a phenomenal title, and now they're making Cyberpunk, and those videos did great. I saw in the fall of this last year, a lot of games that normally don't do well on my channel did well. Reviews for Spider-Man, reviews for Tomb Raider, things that I never expected to do well, did well. Let's play videos with my girlfriend, let's play videos of playing Fallout 4 after Fallout 76. More creative ideas started to come to me and I felt more liberated to start actually exploring and being myself again, which is someone who just doesn't always go straight to the conversation, to the discussion, here's how we can break this down, here's how we can improve, but also just having fun. Like a lot of people always talk about my old Fallout 4 videos where I was a complete goofball and acting like a jackass. And part of that was because I was like 18 at the time. So I didn't really give a damn most of the time, but um, it, it's allowed me to loosen up and, and return more to myself. Um, and I don't mean this to go deeper than it actually is, but that's part of the, the deviation from Bethesda content is because 
I've grown so much with Bethesda, and I don't think I've peaked. I think there's still room to grow, but I see a lot of room to also grow in these other games that interest me, and I have grown from them. I grew a ton from my reviews. I grew a ton from Cyberpunk last year. It was really crazy. Some of my most viewed videos were from Cyberpunk. The Outer Worlds is another one that I know is gonna be a big game for me, and the second there's news for that, like that's that game that I'm on top of. I call it a Fallout 4 effect in a way because I know a lot of you will understand what I'm talking about when I say that if you recall back in the early Fallout 4 days, like when there was a little rumor, Eric Todd Delm sends out a tweet, right? 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, 2 in the morning, doesn't matter, I'm on it. There's that effect with certain games that I cover, like Cyberpunk, where I don't wait till the next day, collect my thoughts, and, and make a conversation that's more concise. Like, there's some times where when EA, for example, they canceled the open world Star Wars game. I was there in Florida with my girlfriend on vacation. It did not matter. We sat down and I recorded like a raw emotional video on why EA sucks. And I enjoyed doing that type of stuff because that's me. I love just being free to create, being free to talk about what I want, do what I want. And like I said, sometimes that's not very business savvy. If you're an upcoming creator, that's not always the best way to run your channel. But it's never steered me wrong in building integrity for my channel, building respect from you guys on my channel, and also finding an audience who loves what I love. Because while my channel's not explosive, I sit around pretty much the, the 15 to 20K range with most videos, some exceeding that to the 30K and beyond range, which is always exciting. I know where I'm at right now, and I'm actually happy with it. And it's allowing me to explore some really awesome opportunities that I teased at the end of last year, which will hopefully lead to more growth for the channel, more creativity. And you guys will understand what I'm talking about when those projects and so on are revealed. But for now, that's kind of where I'm at with the channel in general and also why I don't talk about Fallout 76. It's not that I'm abandoning Fallout, I'm not abandoning Bethesda. It's not that I don't like them. It's not that I'm following the hate train. It's just that right now they don't, have anything worth that's talking about and there's nothing new happening it's always just bug fix issue bug fix issue but then there was a survival mode like i said i was right there ready to talk about it so that's kind of where i'm at i didn't mean to get all ranty there but i, I had to kind of get some of it off my chest so people understood where i was at because it shows in the subscriber count right like the subscriber count went up and then i started really deviating from fallout 76 and naturally some people who were only subscribed to me for fallout realized i wasn't posting yet so they unsubbed and rightfully so they come here for a reason and if they don't want to stay for me and what i have to say about other games that's their decision and i respect that but i felt like before it got a little out of hand and also to give you guys the answer that you deserve that's why right now I took my foot off the gas for Fallout 76. And I know this is a video that's kind of titled and structured in a way where if tomorrow Bethesda were to make a big Fallout update, that I would be the first on it and it would look really weird having, here's why I don't talk about Fallout 76 and then the next day or even a week later, here's a Fallout 76 video. I know it can look weird, but it's just something I kind of wanted to get off my chest and I really wanted to give answers to you guys because I see the question being asked a lot and at times it's reflected in the numbers. Not really video performance wise because for example, my Anthem videos and also my Cyberpunk videos as well as my KOTOR video outperformed any Fallout video I made in the last month. So to me, that, that speaks a lot to where the channel's at. Like it's kind of in that in-between puberty phase almost where, where we've grown a little bit past Fallout. We're just like in that awkward phase trying to find our place here and, and we can continue to grow from there once we really find like a place to slot into, which is right now talking about RPGs and I see that being my future. But I thank you guys so much for sticking with me as we transition from game to game. I took a lot of feedback into account when I was doing some research on Twitter based off what you guys had to say. A lot of people were like, I like how you go from game to game, but stick with a game for a while, which is why Anthem started to work. I got interested in Anthem. I played Anthem. I liked what I played in Anthem and why I continued to cover Anthem into and after its launch. I don't want to do this pre-launch covers and then drop the game like I did uh, very often with games. I want to take a deeper dive into these games, explore more of my creative side, whether it's another discussion or it's a walkthrough or it's something funny that I came up with. I don't want to put this barrier around my mind like it's only got to be Bethesda. It's only got to be Fallout. Like it can be so much more than that. And as a creative guy who has all these ideas and all this potential, I feel, I feel like I can end up wasting it just by trying to stay limited and cooped up, right? So like I said, it's not that I'm not gonna cover Bethesda and when I do cover them, it's not because I feel obligated to, it's because I enjoy them just as 
it has always been, which is when I feel my videos are at their best. So yes, it's less Fallout, yes, it's less Bethesda, but what you guys get, in my opinion, is far higher quality than stuff I was putting out four or five years ago, which I look at now and it's a sign of growth, but I go, oh my God, that was trash. That was absolute trash. Like these motor mouth fucking two minute discussions that offered no substance to the discussion. I'm shocked I built a viewer base off of that stuff, but uh, I'm glad that expectations have risen and you guys want more from me. So anyway, that's enough for me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the end of this video because I know these ranty channel style videos can, can be almost a little self-centered because it's about me and where I'm at. And some people are like, dude, I don't care. Just just make the videos and move on with your life. But uh, for those of you who care enough to listen this deep and, and hear everything I have to say, no, I appreciate you. No, I love you. And uh, let me know if you got this far on Twitter. I'll be sure to send a heart your way because that, that's the type of stuff I like to go the extra mile while my channel may not be exclusively big. Um, it's at that right size where when I get Twitter interactions, I can respond to all of you. And I think that type of interaction is very valuable, especially at this stage in the game. So that'll do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for this excellent conversation. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the channel down below. If you guys got any constructive criticism, you think I could grow in any way, I feel pretty confident with where I'm at. But then again, you know, I'm always open to seeing how I can be better. So fire away down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon to consider supporting that as it feels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.